Right, hello and welcome back to another episode of the LET Golf Podcast. This is George Cooper here with Nicola Kenton. And boy, do we have a treat for you today, guys. We have Team Europe royalty in the house. We've got not one, but we've got two Team Europe captains, the two captains for this year. We've got Suzanne Pettersson and Luke Donald. Suzanne, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. So thanks for having us. No, thanks for joining us. And Luke, thanks for coming over to our side. We obviously strong let contingency but but good to have you here how are you doing yeah good just um just out here at uh, the renaissance renaissance club uh, for the scottish open this week so uh, yeah all good good stuff and suzanne how are you feeling just over two months to go now until the solheim cup how are you feeling how's the prep going well uh, time flies to be honest uh, i feel um there's some really good uh, strong performances from the european players uh, Pretty much across all the tours it was fun to watch obviously the ladies at pebble beach last week uh charlie hall gave it a run there on sunday which was uh, fun to see and uh you know what uh there's not much you can do i mean the players just got to keep playing and keep plugging along and uh, we'll see how the team shapes up uh in what four or five weeks uh from now and but i feel like uh, i've already started to have nightmares uh you know uh, <laughs> like waking up like not being on top of things which i think is just uh, a sign that it's getting closer and uh, the adrenaline is uh, kind of starting to fire yeah absolutely and luke sa- same for you i know you're in a slightly different situation suzanne obviously retired you're still got your playing career you're still playing the odd week so just how's the preparation going for you yeah i, I think it's been important for me to try and be out here and play and and be around the guys and uh, keep the communication up and um you know have dinners and all that kind of stuff so that's been helpful for me um but uh preparation's going well as, as as suzanne said really happy with you know how the guys have been playing you know the people that you would expect to be playing well and have experience in rider cups and then some some other guys rookies that uh you know, continue to win in the US, continue to win on, on the European Tour. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys that have some some name recognition are, are starting to really show up. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. Um, the team is starting to take form. And as I said, it will um, we'll be here sooner than, than later. Yeah, and we, we both can't wait. And just a quick one before Nicholas starts getting on to the golf. I saw the pair of you were both at Wimbledon last week. Um, first of all, Luke, how was it? Yes, I was uh, went Wednesday. Um, very fortunate to sit in the Royal Box, and um, yeah, I was was sitting just uh, not too far from David Beckham. Met Bear Grylls, uh, chat to Clive Woodward, who's obviously uh, a legend uh, when it comes to you know, leading uh, sports sports uh, men in, in the world of rugby. And um, it was it was a great week, uh, um, a great day. I mean, um, my my kids uh, got to come for the first time. They really enjoyed it. They really enjoyed uh, being a part of, uh, you know, what a, what an amazing tradition Wimbledon is. So uh, it was it was a fun day out for the family. Yeah, nice. And Suzanne, on your part, was that your first time there? No, it was not my first time. But it was definitely my first time in the Royal Box. Uh, it was uh, it was a fantastic. Uh, day uh, i was also part of the environmental kind of panels um sustainability panel we had uh, early in the morning and then we had lunch and then rolled out into the royal box and i was fortunate that uh those had been some delay in the in the schedule so i managed to see casper rude um but he lost in five sets but it was uh was uh, very very different and kind of a little bit behind the scenes, kind of see how the tennis guys uh, have it, uh, went through kind of the entire facility and the new tunnel. I mean, it's such a, it's quite a, quite a facility that they've, uh, that they got going and they have massive plans also in the future. So um, it's fun to see. And they, they literally kind of, uh, they look at the Augusta as kind of their, uh, brother in hand on in on the in the golfing world so uh very cool and now we're going to take a trip back down memory lane discussing some of your Solheim cup and Ryder cup memories um so Suzanne we'll start with you you've spoken about it before but what makes the Solheim cup so special for you Well, uh, it's hard to imagine uh, a career without the Solheim. Uh, sitting here now, knowing what it's meant for me, um, 
Uh, but I think uh, in the first couple of years, it really playing and kind of uh, qualifying for this European team, playing the Solheim, kind of the pinnacle of, uh, of female golf, uh, it really helped it define me as a player. Uh, I think I really fell in love with kind of embracing those big moments. And I don't think it is for everyone, uh, or at least it has to grow kind of onto you. But uh, I loved every second of it, and obviously the team format, mixing it up uh, to a fairly individual only uh, um, life otherwise uh, throughout the year uh, makes it also kind of fun. But um, you team up with good friends, competitors, um, and you kind of make memories for life um, through the ups and the downs. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a look back at all the winning moments i think uh, it's as much the ba the the battles the, um, the i mean every moment of it um and each and every one is has their own story uh so uh it's uh yeah it's been a fantastic ride and uh, happy to still be part of it now on a, a different side and luke same to you what does the rider cup mean to you especially now that you're captain <laughs> Well, certainly a huge honor to be captain, but the Ryder Cup has always been so special to me. Uh, I've said this many times that uh, you know, I've had a decent individual career, but uh, all my best moments and the, mem the memories that I remember um, are, are, are during Ryder Cups. I think when you can share those, those moments with uh, your teammates, it just makes it that much more special. Um, you know, playing for something more greater than just yourself. Um, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, isn't it? And um, there's no real... A purer form of, of competition than we have in, in the men's side is, is the Ryder Cup and the Solheim Cup for, for the ladies too, I think is is the same. So uh, yeah, it's just so many special moments, uh, so many great relationships that you've made. Um, and just uh, enjoying those moments together as a team is uh, is what makes it uh, so, so special. And, and the energy and the, 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 the passion of that week that the, the fans you know everyone just is so engaged with that that tournament and uh, it's just a, a special week and you've mentioned that your memories and i'm sure it's really difficult to pick one but i'm gonna make you what is luke what is your favorite uh first of all rider cup memory favorite rider cup memory um probably I mean, I think that's an easy question for Suzanne, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Uh, I, I, you know, when I when I finished uh, 2012, I didn't think that was going to be my last Ryder Cup. Um, but uh, to go out number one, you know, for Jose Maria Lathabal to trust me to go out uh, number one in the singles uh, to try and lead the team back from being 10-6 down and to win that point, um, and then just to watch the rest of my teammates come and slowly win back points and, and narrow that gap. And then uh, obviously to see uh, Martin Keimer hold the winning putt or the, the putt that got us uh, retaining the cup. And then, um, yeah, and then um, Francesco got a half against Tiger. Tiger conceded that putt on the last and we actually won outright. I think just at that moment, you know, that uh, the energy there between us that we'd actually come back uh, and done, kind of done the impossible um, was was my my most special moment and in terms of Solheim Cup do you have a favorite Solheim Cup memory I mean I have several ones and like I said earlier each one has their own story uh in my case it's easy to say the last one was the best one uh but um I think um uh, what makes every my strongest memory is kind of uh the highlights it's almost when you do the impossible that no one expects like i also remember in 2011 there was a rain delay and i mean half the team had already finished and then the rest of us was already playing on the back line and we were sent back out on the course and i was sitting on this golf cart with um with uh Sahara munoz and caroline headwall um i had the three holes to play and they were right behind me and we needed each to win to even have a chance and uh we all all three of us went out there and got our points and it's like those moments are so special i mean uh 
when I was uh, set on that golf cart, it kind of stays between the three of us. But I mean, it's it just means that much more when you kind of pull it off and you can kind of uh, raise your hands above the head and said you actually managed to do it. The one at Glen Eagles, obviously, um, I never thought I was going to play, to be honest. And then I was kind of, I want to say I was calling last minute. I had a couple of months to prepare and um, worked pretty hard to kind of get my game back at uh, the level that I needed uh, it to be. And to be able to go out there uh, knowing that it was probably going to be my last Solheim. Um, uh, uh, it was uh, nerve wracking. Uh, I remember walking up that 18 thinking, uh, I'm really getting too old for this. This gives me way too much uh, gray hairs. Um, and then obviously that it all comes down to you holding that winning part. I mean, it's, uh, it could easily have been Bronte Law who managed to kind of uh, win on 17th just seconds before my putt dropped. So it's all a little bit coincidence as well. But um, at the end of the day, after a long week of golf, it always ends up it's one putt here, one shot there. I mean, it's it literally comes down to so few shots that's so deciding. Um, so that's fun. And I'm going to make you both switch. So Suzanne, do you have a favorite Ryder Cup memory? Well, my first uh, meeting with the Ryder Cup, I was playing on the Ryder Cup uh, junior team uh, in 97 at Valderrama. Uh, that was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, 97, I was... Uh, what? 17 years old, uh, 16 years old, um, and obviously I looked up to all of these uh, heroes, especially, especially the Spaniards. Uh, then I was in Boston with the junior team uh, two years after that, um, and then obviously there's been several ones, but uh, Medina, uh, it's hard to really beat that with the kind of... Uh, um, I remember I uh, we were going to Asia uh, to play, and we were literally on the... Um, we we're about to take off, and I literally just lost reception on my uh, on my screen as the putt left Keimer's uh, putter head, <laughs> and I never knew. So I remember I had to walk up to the cap the, the cockpit and ask the captain, "Can I please? Did he make it? Like I had a feel, but then seeing the the recap and then uh, Jose just going down his knees, the kind of uh, saluting Sevi. I mean, it was very special. I'm glad you went and asked because having to wait that long to find out. Was <laughs> it was like 18 hours later. I was... <laughs> and Luke, for you, do you have a favourite Solheim Cup memory? I mean, how can it not be uh, with Suzanne at uh, Glen Eagles? I mean, <laughs> if you want to finish your career on a high, I can't even think of anything uh, better than the way Suzanne went out. I mean, to hold that putt, what was it, seven, eight feet, six feet, maybe, maybe even longer. I don't know. 20 feet, doesn't matter. Um, it went in. And um, yeah, just uh, to win the Solheim Cup and then to just say, you know, ah, I'm good with golf now. I'm going to do something else. And uh, just to go out on that high, I mean, uh, that's uh, that was, uh, it gave me goosebumps when I was watching it. And you both mentioned winning there, but we want to know about your celebration stories. So, Luke, what's the best? celebration the biggest party who's the most wild let us know who's the most wild well the yeah the americans usually always come to our team room we we, we bring the fun we bring uh, the music we bring the party um you know win or lose but uh i remember my first one 2004 was in detroit and we ended up closing down an irish bar it was just outside our hotel um in just north of the of the city, I think, and uh, it, was, it was good. I, I remember we pretty much, I think I was traveling back to the US, but Darren Clark just went straight from from the bar straight to the plane, I think, and and, and kept kept drinking. Uh, it was one of those Virgin planes. I think he went kept drinking at the bar, uh, just kept it going for about forty eight hours. So uh, yeah, he he was impressive when it came to celebrating. Celebrating, but uh, I mean, they're, they're all fun. Um, certainly, I, I played on four. And I was winning on. Uh, we, we won all four, and you know the only uh, time I was on a losing team was was two years ago in, in Whistling Straits, and uh, certainly wasn't quite uh, as fun. But we still, uh, the, both teams got together and we had a good time. And I think that's a little bit what the the event is about. You know, we try and 
uh, win at all costs and we try and uh, make sure we, we're victorious. But in the end of it, you know, we, we do come together on Sunday night and, and have a good time and celebrate and, and enjoy the memories and the, and the moments we got to share for that week. And Suzanne, same for you. I know it's similar. Europe always bring the party at <laughs> Solheim as well. <laughs> well, you know, you've attended a lot of them. So, uh, well, I guess I was probably one of the wilder ones back in the days. Uh, as I got older, I kind of left it for the for the youngsters. Uh, um, I don't know. I think Mel Reed takes it to a different level uh, every Sunday of a Solheim. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's it's just fun. I mean, I think... Coming Sunday night, if you win or lose, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, everyone's just happy that kind of a big week is over and uh, you share the memories like Luke said. Um, uh, but I got to say, it's pretty equal. I mean, uh, they all come to us. So I guess we bring uh, we bring the joy and uh, we have open bars, you know, there's, uh, there's lo- no limitations. Uh, so um, it'll be fun to see how it kind of plays out at uh, Finca. Yeah, definitely. That's really interesting about, I'd never heard that from a Ryder Cup and Solheim perspective that actually there is that camaraderie post event, you know, you go into their locker room, they go into their locker room. Um, and I don't think that's actually anything I've heard before. So that's really, really cool and, and nice to hear. Right. We got to talk squads and I'm not going to talk about your own squads. I want to get your perspective on each other's squads. So Luke, we'll actually start with you because I know you've probably been asked tirelessly about your own team and who you're going to pick, who's, you know, Who's potential captain's pick, so on. So let's let's look at the Solheim Cup team. How are you assessing Suzanne's squad at the minute, and how do you think Team Europe is shaping up? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sure I'm sure uh, Suzanne's happy. She said uh, early on in the in the in the podcast that she feels like a lot of players are playing well. I saw I saw the results. Uh, I tuned in. I was when was I? Uh, I was traveling up. Um, Sunday uh, to here, but uh, and that the, being the U.S. Open in in Pebble Beach, it was on quite late. But I saw some highlights early on that uh, she, uh, Charlie missed like a short putt on one, right, and then she eagled two, and I think she birdied three, and she was she was off to a fast start, and uh, obviously she's gonna um, you know to finish second in a major and have a good chance is is great. But uh, I'm sure you are very happy with the the way your girls are playing. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't complain. I mean, I think uh, if I talk f- uh, from our team, um, we literally have almost uh, eight players in the top third in the world. Uh, that's never really happened before. Um, so, I mean, the the core of the team is doing really well. And uh, like uh, like on the men's side, I mean, you, you, you cross your fingers like kind of the, the experienced ones kind of keep plugging away and playing the way they should, uh, hopefully no sidelines by injuries and so forth. And then you want to also have some fresh names. Uh, you want to bring some youngsters into the team. I think it's pretty healthy as well. Uh, obviously, uh, I mean, I think an important part for the players when you look at both teams is like you want players winning as well. Uh, winning always gives confidence, uh, belief and kind of makes it a little bit easier. Um, so um, I think, uh, I mean, it's always hard to say. I mean, on from on paper, the European team on our side has never really been favorites, but we're not far off from being at least equal or even better. Uh, but that's almost dangerous to say as well. So I want to say we keep being the underdog. Uh, let the Yanks kind of take uh, take the high, high side and uh, I mean, I think it's fun to watch the men's. I mean, I'm a sports fanatic, so I pretty much watch everything there is. And I keep a good eye on the men's game as well. And obviously with Victor playing so well, it's kind of fun to kind of keep tuning in every weekend. So, um, but it's fun. Um, at the end of the day, any of these players can take each other down on, on a good day. So, I mean, you need a bit of luck. You need a bit of uh, uh yeah, good fortune, you know, uh, uh, to be on home soil, yeah, having the crowds kind of more on your side uh, is very helpful. Uh, I think we experienced the hardest part last year or two years ago with literally, I think it was a total of 20 Europeans uh, on the grounds cheering us on. But uh, sometimes the quietness is a good sign. Uh, so, uh, 
yeah, it's, it's not easy. I mean, Luke has six picks. I only have four. I mean, it's, I think the picks are the hardest. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, I think we're in a we're in a similar place, um, Suzanne. You know, we have a lot of strong players at the top. I think we have four or five guys in the top ten in the world rankings right now, and you know some other guys in in the top twenty. So um, yeah, we're, our top half is pretty strong, um, but uh, there's a lot of up and coming players too, and a lot of guys each and every week playing well. So. It's a good problem to have. Um, there's a lot of players really vying to, to, to try and get those, uh, those, those, uh, be a part of those picks, and yeah, um, a lot of responsibility with six. But I, I do think it gives us a, a good opportunity to to fill our best team. Yeah, and Suzanne, you mentioned obviously Victor Hovland there, which I was gonna I was gonna ask you about. So there's that fantastic interview he did about a year ago where he talked about the first time he met you. I think he was 13, 14, and he. He admitted he was pretty pretty scared of, of of you. So just tell me, do you remember when you first met him and, and what did you think of him as a golfer? And did you think he was going to go on to become well, one of Europe's top players now? I mean, uh, in all fairness, I mean, he was uh, literally a little bit of a late bloomer. Uh, we had a lot of great uh, boys uh, playing on the national team alongside him. And uh, he was one of four and five. I mean, they did really well on the... In like European boys, uh, world championships and all of that. But uh, and then he kind of took off for college, um, and I think that's kind of really helped him and shaped him a lot. And that's kind of where he really came out of his own shoes and really showed showcased some uh, fantastic skills and talent. Uh, he, uh, I mean, if you ask anyone who's been uh, alongside him, kind of growing up, I mean, he's he's always been the quiet one uh, he's never been loud uh, he's been a very hard worker um, so it's fun to see kind of how he's transformed into this uh, american wonder child uh kind of joking around and always smiling and uh, uh it's it's just a, it's just great to see i mean uh, and he's a part of a generation now in norway where we have some tremendous talent in these summer summer sports i mean golf tennis track and field football i mean uh, these guys in the mid-20s i mean they're world class in each in each sport so um uh, they represent the norway in a really well uh well-mannered way yeah for sure so hopefully we'll be seeing more norwegians in the solheim and the Ryder cup in the future and Luke, we'll, we'll throw it to you in a, in a similar vein. You mentioned, obviously, watching Charlie Hall on the weekend. We've got arguably two of our best players, obviously, English at the minute, Charlie Hall, Georgia Hall. Just tell me, do you remember sort of the first time you encountered them? Have you had they had a chance to meet them? And have you got any stories from the pair? Um, I haven't met them much personally. Just said hello a couple of times. Uh, I remember Georgia yeah, winning the, uh, the, uh, the Open chat, the, the, the British Women's Open, right? Um, few years back but uh yeah i don't i don't know them very well uh, i'd love to get to know them a little bit better but uh great players obviously you've got uh leona's been playing great too and um Aaron norquist uh, you know a little bit uh some 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 uh certainly some a lot of experience with anna and you know this yeah again you've got uh, a lot of players playing really well so um yeah i i couldn't uh wish Suzanne and her whole team all the best. Hopefully you can set the tone for, for, for the men um, being the week before, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch. Yeah. Let's just talk about that then setting the tone because we're in a such a new position this year where obviously the Solheim cup and then a week later, almost two weeks later, whatever it is, we have the Ryder cup. Um, just tell us Luke from your side, is that, is there a plan to obviously get the team watching that event and hopefully feel inspired by, by what the women do? Well, the the week before is the French Open for us. I don't think a, a many guys will, will be playing that. Maybe some, um, just depending on how they like to lead up to an event. Um, some people like to, um, you know, play the week before. Some people uh, like to have a few uh, a week or two off before. But uh, I'm sure a lot of us will be tuning in, um, showing our support, and uh, you know, trying to get into that sort of team spirit. You know, just seeing the the energy and uh, uh, what's going on with that. So I'm, I'm excited to uh, to watch and uh, obviously cheer on uh, team, team Europe. Great stuff. 
and obviously you've got three daughters yourself. Are they are they keen golfers yet? Are they are they admirers of the Solheim Cup team? Uh, they're, they're not much into golf. I take them out to the range now and again um, when they're looking for uh, an opportunity for me to take them to the halfway house to get a cookie. That's about <laughs> that's about as far as it goes for them. Um, but uh, yeah, if if dad's watching the TV, they're probably not too far away. So uh, I'm sure they'll be watching and, and, and lending their support as well. Yeah, good stuff. And Suzanne, we spoke about it before. Obviously, your son Herman and your daughter Hermin. She was actually the one that was more uh, a bit, bit more keen in golf. I think you said before, and she and their pair of them are both looking forward to going to Spain. So, has there been any recent developments, and and how keen are they to to get to Spain with you? No, they truly enjoy the beach days a lot, <laughs> and try me to force them to the golf course. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 you don't really want to force it into the onto the kids either. Uh, Herman is five this year, so he probably understands a little bit more. Um, Two year old, uh, she just plugs along whatever they do. So uh, they'll probably come out a little bit, but uh, I'll try and actually keep keep him away. Uh, it's probably the best for me and <laughs> most relaxing for me. Uh, so uh, no, I mean it's fun. I mean you want them to be engaged and kind of understand maybe the world you've been living or the world you're living in. Uh, it's maybe easier when you kind of keep playing the way Luke is. I mean, it's a kind of part of their everyday life for me. Um, I mean, they see pictures and they can see kind of small videos and they kind of, yeah, they know I've been playing, I play golf, but uh, uh, as long as they can enjoy and have fun with whatever they do, uh, if they happen to pick up golf, uh, I'll, I'll cheer them on for sure. But uh, uh, I think they're uh, very keen skiers, both of them already. So I might have already lost that battle. Of course, that makes total sense. But the fact that they will have both attended multiple Solheim Cups by the end of the year, despite being so young in age, shows exactly uh, how much golf means to you and obviously your family. Will, will you have family on site in Finca? Well, my husband will be my uh, my car driver. I don't know how that's going to do. Uh, if we're going to keep being married by the end of the week or if it's just going to be yelling. Uh, uh, but uh, no, uh, I... We love to do stuff together as a family. Um, the family will be in our place just 20 minutes away. Um, so that will get my focus and my attention to the team and uh, the surroundings. Uh, uh, I think that's going to work out the best. So hopefully we'll have a few visits from the kiddos and there might be a few more kids around from other players. So um, I think that also kind of gets the uh, atmosphere a bit. Uh, playful uh, if, it, if it gets to the tense side or whatever but uh, uh, no I'm trying to get a week away from the kids and say Luke asking you the same question will they be family coming out to Italy and seeing the Ryder Cup yeah my whole family will be there um, my kids will stay in a, in a different hotel they'll be in the family hotel rather than the player hotel I think uh, they'll be looked after by my my sister and um some some of uh, Diane's my wife's uh, family as well, but uh, yeah, obviously Diane will be there with me and lots of other families. So it'll be a very much a family affair. That they're, they're they're obviously there supporting me and and uh, enjoying um, you know what's going to be hopefully a, a, a great week for not just myself but um, for for Team Europe. And um, yeah, this is a big deal and a big privilege for me. So it's great to enjoy it with with them as, as much as I can. Of course, always happy to have them by your side. Um, now, switching slightly to strategy and things that you could be focusing on ahead of uh, September. So, Luke, are you looking at stats? How much do stats and numbers about players' games um, do you focus on when looking at different players, especially, for example, the captain's picks? But obviously, you're looking at the types of players who can fit in with your team. What, what are you looking at for those players? Yes, yeah, stats, uh, stats are important. Certainly, I have uh, Eduardo Molinari. He's kind of our, our main stats guy. He works with a bunch of guys uh, out on the European Tour, PGA Tour. Um, he's kind of made a, a good name for himself uh, in, in the world of stats. Um, but yeah, we look at lots of different things, you know, how the players uh, suit the golf course that we're going to play, um, how the six picks will match up with the six that are qualified automatically. Um, you know, we're looking at personality traits, we're looking at uh, possible foursomes pairings, possible four balls pairings, 
um, all kinds of things really that go into it. So, um, you know, we do profiling on the players too. They're sort of, you know, their, their characteristics, their, their, um, how risky they like to be on the golf course, how uh, introverted they are, how extroverted they are. How do they mix with other players because of that? Um, so there's a lot that goes into it. Um, there's a lot of uh, number crunching, a lot of information, but uh, we certainly try to use it to, 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 to give us uh, little edges here and there as much as possible. As Suzanne's saying to you, what, what kind of things are you looking at ahead of picking those players in August? I mean, you, you want to have form, I think. Uh, you want to have players who's playing well. Um, it's almost hard because we have, we're have we picking our team four weeks out. Uh, there's still a lot of golf to be played between uh, when the due date and uh, the event. So uh, hopefully we pick uh, the right people uh, or the right players. Uh, I think the dynamics is very important. Um, you need to have flexibility with your picks in uh, potential pairings. So you want them to fit in with the, the, the rest of the, the team. Um, but I'm looking at form when it comes to my picks. I mean, I only have four. Um, um, and we have a lot of experience already on our team. So I'm not uh, scared of potentially picking a rookie either. Uh, I think... Uh, the way our rookies have played over the last uh, four months that I remember, I mean, they almost perform better uh, than you expect. Uh, and they're fearless. Uh, they have, it's almost like they don't know what they're, uh, what to fear for in a way. And they go out there and they fight their hearts out. And you want people that are keen on winning. You want that winning mentality kind of, uh, uh, in their head well, no i mean there's a lot of varieties uh stats are important but at the end of the day uh, uh you still gotta go out and play the golf course under kind of different circumstances that you normally are and uh yeah so it's uh, there's a lot of uh, variables but uh, hopefully as a team um you do the you pick the you do the right choices mm -hmm. And in terms of your captaincy style, when you were last on the podcast, you mentioned how much of an influence Beanie was on you as and with her captaincy style. But what captaincy style are you going to bring to the Solheim Cup? Well, when I was playing, I was probably more feisty and in your face. Uh, I'm actually quite more laid back uh, uh, these days. Uh, it's usually how I am on off the golf course. But... Uh, Hopefully I can kind of, uh, if I can just uh, be half of what Beanie was and kind of bring a f little bit of energy and adrenaline to the girls, um, that would be important, I think. But I think just being yourself, um, making yourself approachable um, for everyone, you know. Um, and at the end of the day, communication is everything. Um, the, uh, I think... You can judge a lot of the Solheims I've been a part of and the different captains and every captain brings their flavor to to the team into the team room. But at the end of the day, I think as a player, you really appreciate the communication and kind of uh, being pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, it's easy when we can relate as past players that you know how you would love to receive messages, how you want to be communicated. And everyone's different, you know? Um, so as a captain, you need to know how to address uh, each player. Uh, and that's kind of a part of the, the preparation as a captain, uh, learning the dynamics and kind of facilitating for each and every one to kind of uh, have the week of their lives. Yeah, for sure. And Luke, same for you. What captaincy style will you be bringing? What's the most important thing for you to be doing as a captain? Um, I think just as Suzanne said, you, you want to be authentic. You want to be true to yourself. Um, you don't, you're not trying to change and, and be different to uh, be somebody else. Um, you know, so I'm just trying to be there as much for the, the players. Know that, you know, I have their best interests at heart. I'm here to try and make the right decisions to give them the best opportunity for success. Um, and a lot of communication goes along with that. I think that's really key. A lot of the players just love to be in the loop and what's going on. And 
um, and feel involved and feel like you, you care about how they're doing. And um, I certainly do. Um, so that that's really the main thing, you know, and just cr trying to create a, kind of a culture and, a, and a, the right environment for, for them to succeed. You know, and I think um, everyone, you know, it's you want to bring that team together, but you've also got to, uh, you know, be careful about not uh, getting them out of what makes them really great. And, that, and that's you know, usually there are individuals that play an individual sport and they have their ways to practice, their ways to focus and, and prepare. And you, you can't change that too much, but you do definitely certainly want to bring uh, that team element, that unity, um, that, that kind of vibe into the team room and get them really fired up for, uh, for the week. Yeah, definitely. And in terms of uh, your previous Ryder Cup experiences, I'm gonna, it's a two ended question. So the first bit is what's the best bit of advice that you've been given from a previous captain when you were in a team? And then the second bit is since you were appointed as captain, have any previous captains given you advice? Uh, I'll answer the second part first. I've talked to most of the captains that uh, I've certainly been under and others, um, you know, and I think the best advice is just to kind of go with your gut, go with your gut instincts um, more than anything. You know, we all do have statistics. We have uh, a lot of things at our disposal, but um, I think we deep down know, um, you know, the right decisions to make uh, to do the right thing. And um, so, you know, I, I'm going to use that um, certainly um, going forward. And what, what's the best thing a captain's ever told me? Yeah. Hard to remember, to be honest. As a player, you're so in the moment and you're so involved with everything. But I think uh, most of all, it's just to go out there and kind of enjoy it. I think we we do sometimes. I certainly didn't think two, 2012 was going to be my my final Ryder Cup playing. And you know, if I did know that, looking back, I probably would have enjoyed some of the moments a little bit more. It was quite a hectic week. It was a lot going on, and I just didn't play well at the beginning of the week and you know, um, these are our best moments. And uh, sometimes you, you are a little bit caught up in, in the moment too much to really enjoy it. So to have fun, um, you know, I certainly had some of my past captains told me to just go out there, do what I do, um, enjoy watching uh, putts go in and um, enjoy uh, hearing the crowd support you because, you know, it's such a, such a, such a great week. And Suzanne, same for you best pieces of advice given? Wow. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of specific ones, but I one that I really remember was uh, Alison Nicholas, uh, I think it was in 2011. And I was probably playing some of my guest, best golf and uh, she kind of looked at me and she kind of stared me in there or looked up into my eyes. Uh, she's just like a head uh, lower than me and she kind of tried to catch me by my shoulders like you're born to do this like I'm like don't worry I got it uh, I have all the confidence in the world to to believe in my own game but it's hard to kind of get in everyone's kind of head as well you kind of want p the players to do their own thing so it's like it's also like trying not to do too much uh, so uh, it's uh it's just fun i mean uh you know the captains are there supporting you no matter what and uh, uh, i feel like the few times as a player and you walk off and you kind of you didn't get your point you kind of feel like you let your captain down in a way uh even though you never feel sorry but you kind of that's that was never a fun moment kind of when walking off a, off a defeat and walk into the player dining and like it's like it's like you, you want to bring that vibe and you want to bring that point um, into the team room and kind of get everyone going. So no, it's um, you just got to go with the flow, I think. Absolutely. And with the picks coming up soon and the fact the you know, qualification ends in six weeks time on Sunday, um, what events will you be attending over the next would... kind of period? I'm going to everyone uh, from now on. Um, so um, um, 
I'm spending all week at the, the Dow Invitational. Obviously, um, that's a natural fit for me. And then I'm doing every event uh, moving forward. So I'll be a lot. Uh, I haven't been as much present uh, during the events, but I've been keeping in touch with all the players uh, fairly regularly uh, uh, on a weekly basis. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, not a stranger to anyone. Uh, but um, it's uh, it's been fun. I mean, um, the captaincy is one thing, but you also managed to establish some new friendships along the last uh, year or so. And uh, some of them have been really, I've really enjoyed kind of getting to know some of these uh, new players. Um, and uh, I kind of feel old because they keep asking for advices and this and that. I'm like, girls, you're so talented. Just go out and play the way you do. And, uh, fired every pin and it was fun to see Charlie not laying up on the, on the 18th. Uh, just, uh, she just, it's just a game of golf, right? Uh, what is there to lose? So I just love seeing the girls go having fun and enjoying themselves on the golf course. Uh, so yeah, it's getting close for sure. I had a text message where I said, well, I would have a group chat with the, the other captains, my vice captains, and uh, I keep kind of plugging like messages almost every other day now, like get your head spinning. We need to kind of, it's getting close. So I think we're all feeling it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And um, Luke, same for you. What events are you going to be at? Yeah, for uh, for uh, my next five, I think are going to be over here in Europe. Um, you know, I think that's where I should be. Um, I'm obviously here at the Scottish Open, big field uh, this week. I'll be at the Open Championship. Um, I play one in the US just before the playoffs, just an attempt for me to try and make those playoffs. But uh, if not, I'll be I'll be back in uh, Europe after that. I'll be in Czech. I'll be uh, in uh, Ireland. I'll be at Wentworth. So I'll be around the players a lot uh, leading up. Uh, these uh, last couple of months, as, as Susan said, it's going to be here before we know it. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, counting down the days now. And you've both mentioned vice captains, but yeah, how often are you in contact with your vice captains and talking about, as you say, <laughs> getting closer and closer? Yeah, this week uh, it's been fun for me. I'm in a house with uh, um, Nicholas uh, Colsarts and Eduardo. Uh, Thomas is with his family, so he's not with us. But um, yes, uh, just being around them is, is great. You know, it's much more easier to have those communications when uh, you know, when you're together in a room rather than just uh, over over WhatsApp groups and stuff. But there's a lot more communication going on on those as well. So uh, yeah, it's it's all ramping up for sure and um finally luke from me anyway <laughs> how much are you relishing the underdog tag that team europe potentially have going into this Lohan cup at uh, this world cup well I, I think we will be an underdog again on, on paper the, the americans are very strong they have some strong partnerships that have been pretty proven in the last Ryder cup in the last presence cup um they have ridiculous winning percentages so um they're going to be very strong. Um, we don't mind being the underdog. Um, it certainly hasn't hurt our chances and our, our success over the last uh, 20, 25 years. Um, going back uh, even 30 years, I think we haven't lost a home. So there's some pressure in that too, uh, to try and keep that streak going. But uh, we like we like being the underdogs. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be strong and um, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, as long as you have the right attitude and, and know that uh, being the underdog doesn't mean that uh, that we can't bring the cup back yeah definitely and Suzanne, you mentioned oh go on Nicola oh sorry George <laughs> uh, you Far mentioned away. earlier the fact that you might be on par going in with the Americans with obviously two of them two major winners this year being American they're performing at the big tournaments um, how does it feel to go into a Solheim Cup you know, with three and three in a row on the line, and potentially as co-favorite. I mean, it's a huge shoes to step into to kind of try and do three peat. Uh, that's why I said to be in a this voice for you. I mean, I don't know if I want to take this on, uh, but I feel like I have some great players. Um, uh, I mean, win or lose. I mean, you win, you're going to be a hero. 
if we if we lose, I mean, probably people are going to criticize you kind of for. But you can't think like that. Uh, you just have to try and kind of uh, get the best uh, twelve players together uh, and get the spirit going. I I mean, we have always been underdogs. Uh, fair to say, and uh, I truly enjoy it. Uh, her like it's things uh, better uh, when you finally defeat like you have managed to get the wins on the Sunday and uh, I have some great co-captains uh, obviously Laura has uh, an enormous amount of experience she's probably the most laid-back co-captain you can have uh, she still thinks it's uh, a lot of golf to be played before the team is going to be announced so uh, even though I'm kind of feeling the vibe, I mean, uh, the people around me are kind of also very much in the loop. They're out there playing, they're kind of talking. And most importantly, the players are really starting to kind of chit chat Solheims uh, when they play and when they get paired in tournaments. And, and that's important. I remember myself how it used to be. I mean, you keep kind of getting the expectations up and you kind of look, for, you have something big that you're kind of looking forward to. So. Uh, I want that vibe already going, and it's uh, naturally happening uh, on the fairways. Good stuff. A few more then, and we'll we'll let you guys get on with your day. But just how are the courses looking? I mean, we both got home advantage this year. Suzanne, I know we spoke before, and you said you're constantly in communication with Finca. You're constantly making tweaks. Um, and Luke, I'll pass this to you as well. You know, what's what's how are the courses looking, and a tweak still being made on a regular basis? Luke, we'll start with you. No, not so many tweaks. We obviously played the Italian Open there uh, at the end of May. Um, the course was set up you know, pretty similar to how it, how it will be. There's not too many changes you can make. Uh, there's a few adjustments that we made before that week. Um, but, you know, we have a style that we like to play and we'll, we'll look at statistics again to, to make sure that the, the course is favors, favors us um, a little bit. As I said, the, the players are, are quite similar these days. Um, you know, in terms of skill and talent, and it's hard to find those uh, those little uh, incremental um, differences between the teams. But you know, you, you try your best. Um, there's certain things that the the U.S. team are, aren't really used to um, when it comes to European courses, and, and they have their style, and we have our style when we play at home. So um, I'm excited for it. It's a, it's a beautiful venue just on the outskirts of Rome. It's, I think it's going to be an amazing. Uh, setting amazing backdrop um rome is obviously a special place and it's a place that my wife and i have visited quite a few times and uh, yeah just looking really looking forward to to the week in general yeah lovely stuff right a couple to end with then i'm just going to hit you with it suzanne if you could have one player from luke's team who are you picking rory rory you, you took a while to think about that one well, I want to say Victor, <laughs> obvious, but yeah. Good stuff. And Luke? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Leona. She's got a good spirit about her. Yeah, obviously phenomenal last time out. So it's a solid pick. And quick one then while we end on it. Predictions for the summer. If we're here chatting in October, how do you think the, the end of September's gone? Suzanne first. I would say Team Europe. Double. Two great weeks in Europe. Yeah. What do you expect us to say? Come on. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> We're here to win. Let's go. That's it. See, that's what I was trying to get out of you guys. The fans, the fans need Forza to hear. Europe. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, have you got a message for the fans before we go? But I think you've just summed it up pretty nicely there. Let's go. Let's get behind us. You know, that's it's important to have the crowd behind us. 13th man, 13th woman. Yeah, the same. Uh, really, really important to have that crowd behind us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're in the right place. The Italians are going to be up for it. The Spanish are going to be up for it. It's going to be a great two weeks of golf. So yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And and obviously, thank you for your time, guys. I mean, it's been a it's been really great having you both on. Hopefully, you've been able to get some ideas off one another. <laughs> and this isn't the end of that. You can you know feel free to keep pinching ideas and, and chatting to one another because it's. Yeah, it's, it's interesting times for sure. So Suzanne, Luke, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, thank guys. Thank you. Thanks for having, having us. Week, I don't see you, Suzanne. See you. And good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank Same you, guys. You. Bye. Thanks.